Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you how to set some of Minecraft's game controls. So knowing about some of these key features you can adjust in Minecraft's game controls is a huge advantage because it allows you to customize the game in a, a range of ways to suit the activity you want to do and also showing students how to do this as well will improve their gameplay experience. So firstly you want to create a new world so keep clicking through create new world until you get to um, this screen here. Um, so this brings you to the, the game controls menu and gives you a wide range of things you can adjust before generating the world. Um, now we're focusing on the list of features you can change on the right hand side. So first up you can uh, rename the world um, if you'd like. And the next uh, setting you can change um, is the, the game mode. So the game mode appears at the top which is great because this is the most important feature you're going to want to change. The game mode you select alters the way you play Minecraft completely. So currently the Education Edition has two game modes. That's either creative or survival. In a way, survival mode is very much like the Hunger Games. You spawn with absolutely nothing and need to scavenge resources, uh, build a base for protection, find food to replenish your health, and, and worry about creatures or other players in the environment that can hurt you. So, where survival mode is more of a sandpit adventure game, creative mode is a, a, like a giant Lego box where you spawn with access to all the blocks and all the resources available in the game already in your inventory. In creative mode, you can fly, you can destroy blocks instantly, which is different from survival mode where you have to repeatedly like bludgeon blocks to destroy them. Uh, so people who use creative are generally interested in building and engineering. So creative mode is good for creating architecture, cities, castles, machinery, uh, anything you want really. Um, so of the two modes, I think creative is the best one for classroom use in my opinion because I like to use it to support students creating or building something like a piece of architecture, uh, a myth or a historic site. So this means they have access to all the blocks they need and they don't have to worry about the added complexities of surviving. So the next feature allows you to set the game difficulty. Set your difficulty to peaceful so uh, harmful mobs or harmful creatures like Zombies don't spawn naturally in the world, and you won't have to worry about your hunger. You generally don't have to worry about these things anyway in creative mode, but I always set this to peaceful anyway. Um, you have easy, normal, and hard levels of difficulty, which I haven't really found a need to introduce in the classroom because I want my students to focus on creating things and, and not surviving. The next feature down the list allows you to set the world type um, that the game will generate. The default is infinite, which generates a world made up of multiple biomes or landscapes like uh, forests and mountains and oceans. Flat is, well it's flat, a flat world. And the uh, old world option generates a world that has finite boundaries, so it's kind of like the opposite of the infinite world, which just goes on and on and on and, on and just keeps generating um, terrain forever. Generally students like to use the infinite world because it gives them a really interesting environment to explore. However the flat world is also useful if you don't want them to do any exploring and just kind of want them to focus on building something. So letting students choose between these options is generally a good idea. Uh, scrolling down now to set the coordinates to on. So when the when you toggle the switch to the right by clicking on it this turns um the, the function that you're looking at on so i've just turned the coordinates on so when i spawn into the world uh, it's going to show me my x y and z coordinates in the top left of the screen so this is good for uh, showing my location in, in the game world and being able to locate other people or uh, using certain game commands that require coordinates uh we didn't need to worry about immediate respawn because um, we're in peaceful, peaceful mode. Um, 
generally I always like to have cheats activated um, because this gives you access to a, a list of uh, console commands or game commands that you can use to, to program the environment for some extra functionality. Um, I've created a video on how to use uh, the fill command as an example which you can find on my site. Uh, I always like to have always day on um, Otherwise, if you, if you don't, if you turn this off, then your Minecraft world's gonna follow Minecraft's day-night cycle, and just like in the real world, it's pretty pretty hard to work in Minecraft when it's dark. So another thing I'd recommend doing, you can ignore the, the um, random tick speed, and you don't have to worry about Code Builder for now, but just so you're aware of, of Code Builder, it's got, like Minecraft can be connected to a Code Builder app, um, so you can, learn how to code with Minecraft but which is really useful if you want to teach a bit of computer science um, do activate the classroom settings by clicking on it and if you scroll down this will give you um, a list of other game features you can activate or not I generally activate perfect weather so there's um, no rain and activate mobs this means creatures like um, sheep, cows, and other animals will spawn in the world that you create. Students might choose to turn these on and off depending on their preference or your preferences. Uh, having sheep around may be distracting, but I found most students enjoyed having these creatures around when they were uh, building things. Of course, it'll depend on the activity and your preferences as to what you want to do here. Uh, generally, I don't encourage to turn on any of these last four options. So can go ahead and switch these to the left to turn them off. Um, with destructive items, we generally didn't need these. These are things like dynamites. Um, some of my students did use them from time to time, but generally they weren't required for what we were using it for, for building temples and, and mythology. Um, having player to player damage and um, player damage turned off is good to stop students from killing each other's characters in the game. However, I never found this to be an issue. Uh, at the start, when students who were new to Minecraft started playing, they naturally wanted to test out some of the we weapons on each other, just out of curiosity, really. But you can have player damage turned off. But really, I think at senior high school level, this isn't really going to be an issue if it's on or not, because they'd rather stay on task building what they're building instead of going around and being aggressive towards other players. Um, the immutable world feature is handy to know about. So when this is activated, um, no blocks can be destroyed in the world. This makes it perfect for when students present their work to others because it locks everything in place so it can't be changed. Some students who visit somebody else's world to have a look might accidentally click on a block. It destroys part of a building or part of what somebody else has created. So activating immutable world can help avoid that problem. However, you definitely want to make sure this is turned off when students are building things. So that's a quick rundown of your game controls in Minecraft. You can go and generate the world now um, by clicking create on the left hand side of your screen. Um, at any stage, if you want to alter your game settings um, during your gameplay, simply hit escape, which will pause the game and allow you to go back to the uh, game settings where you can change any of those things that we just looked at. So I hope you found this useful and thank you for watching.